Hey guys, it's Varan from Speaker Plus Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a sort of practice with me, improve with me, tips to improve, stuff like that kind of video. We are not gonna do any final pieces, it's just me with a pencil and paper and a lot of hands. Now, I've been wanting to do this kind of video for quite some time, actually since I started my channel or since I started being active rather again, I've been wanting to do this kind of video, but it also meant that I needed to practice things that I didn't exactly want to practice, but I needed to practice, you know, the usual stuff. <laughs> so let's start off with something easier or something more prominent, which is hands. Now there are a million tutorials and how-tos online. Just Checking out Pinterest, where I do take a lot of reference for hand poses. There are a ton of hand references and tutorials. And I guess this is just me chatting about my own hands journey. <laughs> anyway, I guess my first tip would be you need to include something you dislike drawing in your pieces as much as possible. So I'm pretty sure when you were younger, I myself did this. Um, when you were younger, you would drop drawings where the hands are behind their back, or in my case, I would cut them out of the frame of the photo, it's of the picture itself. So their hands actually cut off near their wrist because I didn't want to draw the hands. Uh, <laughs> and that face didn't didn't stay for very long because my characters usually wielded weapons like swords and bows and magic and lances and books and all of that so i needed to draw their hands and because my characters and my theme and my fantasy stuff likes or rather kind of needs hands <laughs> um i was forced to draw them even if i'm not an, an expert at it and because i kept on drawing hands over and over again my intimidation drawing them sort of lessened Actually, I don't have any intimidation drawing them now, it's just a matter of figuring out how to draw it. But like the fear of drawing hands isn't, isn't there anymore because I know I can probably do it or I can figure out a way to do it. And the only way you can get to that point is through doing it over and over again. Just practice, practice, practice. Just drawing hands so much that it's almost hard not to draw it, I guess. So yeah. If you're a younger artist, I would suggest that if you dislike hands or any or feet or any kind of thing for that matter, you need to start drawing pieces where you would be forced to draw the hands and they will suck. There's a guarantee that it'll turn out bad, but through time and effort and trying to understand the thing that you dislike more, you will start to understand more and more how you can go about drawing it how you can find out techniques, how to make it look a certain way. Um, you'll find your own ways of doing it. But I'll just talk about how I do it today. So generally, I start with the palm area, which is like this. It's like a, um, a really thin, squarish thing. And then I would draw like the triangular area where the thumb is. And I would draw the thumb first. Because where the thumb is, and how long the thumb the thumb length is dictates also how long the palm and the rest of the fingers will be. So if I determine where the thumb or how the thumb looks like, the rest of it is easy. So we have the palm, the thumb, I should also draw the arm that it's attached to, and then the rest of the fingers are essentially just, um, it's just a sausage that's cut up into three. So if you look at your fingers, you have where your knuckles are, and then like the first joint where it usually folds, and then there's the second joint just above your fingernails that could, that would sometimes fold as well. And once you understand that, you, once you understand how it functions and how it works, you can sort of get how you can start drawing it. Now, for me, because I like doing fantasy, drawing fantasy stuff, doing swords and weapons. The second page that I'm doing right now is more applicable to my style. So I'm 
I'm doing poses that I think would eventually come up in my drawings or have come up in my drawings and have had challenges with. So for example, this one, you might see, I think you might have seen my hand coming into the frame every now and then. That's because I was using my own hand as a reference. And that's another tip you have. You have hands. Usually. I hope I'm not offend offending anyone with this, but usually you have hands. And they're usually right in front of you. Now, if you hold out that hand and try to understand it before you start drawing, you can sort of get an idea how you would go about it. Also, if you don't have hands, I guess, maybe your friends or your family would like to help you and let you borrow their hands. Otherwise, you can just jump on Pinterest or the internet and search hands or hands reference and there are a ton of photos that would come up and you can draw from there. But generally, the reason why art teachers like you would like you to draw from life rather from a photo is because there's a certain depth and interactiveness with real life, of course. So if you have a clenched fist right in front of you, you can sort of angle it and observe it however you want to. And then you'd start to understand how the light would hit this, how this, how this finger interacts with this finger. If it's your own hand, you have a tactile feel of, what, of how, it, how it is positioned in a way against a photo where it's just a 2D image and sometimes the depth isn't conveyed as well as in real life. So if you have hands available <laughs> that you can draw off of in real life, that's better. If you don't, or if you just need, if you just need help with poses, Pinterest and Google are your friends. Mm. Now, sometimes I also like to draw the depth of the hand itself. So, with the clenched fist on the left, on the left side of the page that's holding the cloth, I actually did draw a bit of the of shadows where the fingernails would be. That's because that's where the shadows would hit. And because I want it to be clenching cloth, I would know that in this area, there's a bit of shadow or this would convey, convey depth because it is clenched or because it's under everything and stuff like that. Now, that would also help with your drawings because it helps you understand... <laughs> I've said this word so many times in this video by now. It would convey depth. And depth is important because it's also somewhat perspective. And I also dislike perspective, but it helps. It really helps. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say. I'm just, at this point, I was doing random, somewhat random poses. Like, oh, holding a book like this. Or in that, in that particular position. I even <laughs> twisted my hand in all sorts of manners just to sort of see how it would look like from that view. And I didn't exactly get it correct. But it does kind of look like a hand. So yay. <laughs> um, with this particular drawing that I just finished, really, it's really, really messy. So I grabbed the red pen and tried to outline where the fingers are. You know, just for a little bit of fun. And yeah. So I just keep on drawing hands. Another thing that I will be drawing sometime, should be soon, would be feet. Now, that's something I don't have a lot of practice in. I only usually draw feet when I do my character designs. And that's because I draw my character is almost naked, but not quite. So, usually my feet turn out really, really weird. I would need to research and um, practice a, a bit more on that. But I definitely do a video. Because that's another thing that I need to work on. Uh, because I usually don't draw feet, because usually my characters are wearing shoes or boots, or I actually also like doing somewhat portrait-ish looking drawings. I rarely actually get to draw feet. And that has led me into a severe state of this practice with feet. Another thing would be probably be perspective, and then maybe backgrounds. Mm, what else? You know, there's, there's a ton of things I could practice, but those are the things that I usually kind of avoid and kind of scared to do you should have problems with them but there's no way to do it than to just ease it and just to draw them 
and the more I avoid them, the less I'll be able to understand them. So, I'll just do them, you know. <laughs> huh, man. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I, I've been trying to do like sort of more tips and tricksy videos because I do have some stuff I like to talk about like sketchbooks and thumbnailing and hands and this and that. The Yushimei channel is composed of fan art and watercolor and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, please feel free to check it out. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and or you know subscribe. Uh, if it helped you, or if you have questions, please leave a comment down below. Or if you have things that you disagree with me, I guess you can comment that too. I don't really mind. <laughs> um, any and all thoughts are welcome. So I hope you enjoyed. Please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and DeviantArt. Check out my other video that I posted last week. It was a landscape um, summary vibe video, so do check that out as well. And I'll see you around. Bye.